Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Asshole Consulting, how you doing? Hello, Cappy. Quick background. I'm a young man following the path for early retirement extreme. I live comfortably on $7,200 a year for bills and perhaps $2,500 a year for hobbies with the caveat that my employer pays for my health insurance. I've paid off my 2012-year car. I have $7,000 left on my trailer. No student debt. I'll very likely be semi-retired before turning five. Here are my two questions. Once I have my trailer paid off, I plan on investing in a low-fee, low-risk, diversified, taxable portfolio of various stocks, bonds, and real estate index funds, being that I won't qualify for capital gains due to my low income and lack of trading activity. Do you think this is the best way for the layman to obtain a passive income through the stock market? Well, I mean, I can't guarantee it, but yeah, more or less. And the reason why is it's the index funds, and we'll go through the same old financial lessons here again. Depending on what year and depending on how long you want to go back, uh, the index beats 85% of the professionally managed funds. It beats 85% of the professional money managers. So why would you... Hang on, I've got to kill a spider. Get it. Ah, he escaped. Someday again, spider. Um, so if you can beat 85% of them just investing in an index fund, why would you go with the professional money managers? And so a whole industry has popped up, indexed funds, of, of various index funds, ETFs, low, low fee, you know, Vanguard, Fidelity, they all got their low 1% or lower annual fee index funds. Um, and so, you know, if that's, you know, to get passive income, well, it depends if they're paying dividends or not. Um, and the dividend yields are really super low, 1.82%, just checked it yesterday. And yes, the dividends will go up over time. And yes, down the road, you might be making 5% on your original investment. But for now, it's pretty low. Me, I, I personally prefer entrepreneurship if you have a good business idea. Because I get a higher rate of return on my investments than I do the 1.82% of the um, S&P 500 index fund. But um, if you want truly passive, like here it is, I don't ever want to work for it again. Yeah, you, you can do it, but don't expect it to be a lot of dividend income just yet. Um, it's, you're going to have to build up quite the portfolio there to make your money. Um, but yes, that's, that's kind of the, the industry standard advice. You're going to go with index funds. Now, you're going to have to figure out, I, I don't tell you what to invest in. I just explained to you index funds. But... That's up to you how to figure out your allocation between stocks, bonds, and real estate um, for you. Um, you. You may want to throw in, like your trailer's got to sit somewhere. Here's an idea. If you find the right piece of property, maybe you buy a bunch of land, put your trailer on it, and then you parcel it out. That's another thing you might want to think about. Again, that depends on the piece of property, if it's the right price, and blah, 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 blah. But if you want that dividend income or interest income, yeah, you're going to have to invest through that. The final thing I'd recommend is um, you might want to look at, although this would be a, more of an IRA investment, is these robo-investors where they do the allocation automatically for you across indexed funds based on life expectancy, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's more of a, a post-62, 65 retirement plan. Um, that's where you won't be able to retire until you qualify for your IRA uh, withdrawals and distributions. Uh, and I know with early retirement, the, the idea is to retire before you're 62. So you, you'd just be looking at a regular investment portfolio. Um, so I don't know if, there, if that would ap apply, but it might be wise to have something set aside for the, the time you are 62 or 65. You've got this other retirement portfolio that's been growing over the past 30 years. Also in an index funds uh, that that would just provide a little bit more supplemental income down the road. Two, could you how could you explain how health savings accounts work and comment if you think they're a good way to help pay for potential medical bills? Well, a health savings account is like an IRA. You throw in some money pre-tax, so you don't have to pay taxes on it. Income, I mean, you invest it in a you know mutual funds diversified portfolio, and then uh, for your Premiums that are not covered uh, by your health insurance, 
uh, you can withdraw money from that account to pay for those uh, expenses. So there are qualified medical expenses that if not covered by your insurance, you can withdraw from your HSA and pay for them. And do I think they're a good way to help pay for potential medical bills? It depends on um, how much of a premium you got. Uh, if This is why they have HD, HD high deductible you need a high deductible policy, meaning it's like $5,000. Well, who has $5,000 laying around? Well, if you were at the early retirement extreme, you might actually have $5,000 laying around. So that's one thing to consider. Um, but if if they pay, you know, if you got a really nice health insurance plan and it's, oh yeah, all you got to do is pay a copay of 50 bucks and we'll take care of everything else. Well, you don't really need an HSA. Uh, but it's, yeah, I mean, depending if you if you have a two, three, four thousand dollar uh, deductible on your health insurance, well, yeah, that that'd be something to consider uh, getting. Um, but me, I, I don't know, I always have enough cash on hand. It's like here you go, leave me alone. That's that's basically it. So, all right, got to keep banging out the work. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.